Okay, so today what we're going to look at is how do we account for sales taxes. So up until this point in the semester, we pretty much just assume that when we make a sale, we just record the amount of the sale, and that's the end. But we know this isn't the case because we know when we go to the store, the price on the tag does not reflect the final price we pay. And so the main reason for this is that we have to deal with sales taxes. So that's what we're going to see here. So in this case, it tells us Dextra Computing sells merchandise for $16,000 in cash on September the 30th with a cost of $11,200. Dextra then collects 9% sales tax. So we want to record the entry for $16,000 sale and the related sales tax. And we also want to show the entry that actually shows us remitting this tax to the state. So you say, well, why do we need to remit it to the state? You know, well, when we make a sale, we collect sales tax, but that tax revenue does not belong to the company. Instead, it belongs to the state. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold on to this until maybe the end of the month or the, the middle of the next month in this case, which is when we're typically going to pay our sales tax. This will be in the middle of the next month. And so what we're going to see is how do we handle that? So in this case, in the sales, right, which we have been calling sales revenue up until this point, is going to be recorded at whatever it was, right? So in this case, they told me we made a sale worth $16,000, so that amount will go to sales revenue. But they also tell me that I collect 9% sales tax for the state. So when I have that 9% sales tax, that's going to come in right there, that $1,440. And that's all that we're going to see here. So now, the way that we get this cash amount is we just take the sum of 16000 and 1440 which will give me 17440 which is the amount of cash that we see collected here. However, there is another way to get that cash amount, and that's what I'll show you now. So the way, the other way to do this, and I would do this both ways if I was taking a test, is I would take my 16000 times 1.09 and when I do that I'll get 17,440 and what you should see is that the sum of these two brings you to exactly this 16,000 times 1.09 so that you know you've done your math properly and I'll just give you one more way to kind of check yourself as you go on the exam okay. now the second piece here tells us that we now need to book the cost. Well, this is going to be done just like it was in the last time that we talked about inventory in a perpetual system. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that $11,200 and we're just going to drop it in cost of goods sold and inventory. So it'll be a debit to cost of goods sold, which is an income statement account, and it's going up since it's an expense, and merchandise inventory is coming down and it's a balance sheet account. Now, if you recall, earlier in the semester, we said beginning inventory plus purchases gave us something that we called cost of goods available for sale. And we said then that was broken out into two places. It can either end in cost of goods sold on the income statement or ending inventory on the balance sheet. So what that tells us is that we then have to come through and see that this is moving what would have been an ending inventory on the balance sheet to the income statement through cost of goods sold. That's all that's happening when we make a sale of inventory. So that's all that's happening here. And we have now completed the second journal entry, a debit to cost of goods sold and a credit to your merchandise inventory account. Okay. Next, we need to look at what happens when we actually remit this payment to the state. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw us up a T account called Sales Tax Payable. And I'm going to credit Sales Tax Payable for $1,440, which comes from this very first journal entry that we did. But now, since we're actually remitting this to the state, we need to reduce that liability, right? So we said Sales Tax Payable was a liability, so it was increasing with a credit here. But now that we're actually paying it off, we need to debit sales tax payable, which will leave us with zero dollars in that sales tax payable account. Okay, So that's all we're going to have here. But now you say, well, how are we going to pay it? Well, we're going to pay it with cash, right? So our credit is going to go to the asset called cash, 
which is a balance sheet account, and sales tax payable is also a balance sheet account. In this case, both are going down. And that's the end of question number one.